All right, so I'm going to start by just revisiting this real quick. Because one of the things that came up yesterday and was this whole thing that says <coughs> exclude values of g of x, and then I had people asking, so g of x is always the one that can't be 0. And I said, oh, I, you know what, I should have reworded this. I should have worded it differently. But then after I thought about it, I thought, no, I really shouldn't have. Because the reason it says specifically g of x is not that every g of x that exists is what you're going to do and you always pick g of x. It's because it's based on what I have here. Okay, So this is your example. Of, we're just talking about f and g. And of course, it could be h and q, and it could be whatever. But in this particular case, because we are dividing, it's going to exclude values in which g of x equals 0. So if this was h of x, then I would exclude when h of x equals 0. If this was f of x, then it would be f of x and so forth. OK? Does that make sense to you? So that's why it's written that way, because you have to define something when you're explaining things. All right, and then the next thing was down here. I don't remember which class this came up in, but somebody said when we got to this one, don't we have to rationalize the denominator? And so my initial reaction was, oh, yeah, I haven't been doing that. I guess we should have. But then again, that was kind of like spur of the moment. And so then once I thought about it, I thought, no, you don't have to rationalize this because it's not your final answer. And you don't know if the denominator is a rational number or not because you don't know what x is, right? If I substitute in 6 and 6 minus 2 is 4, then the denominator is 2. There's no need to rationalize it. Does that make sense? So we rationalize at the, at the final step, like if you left a square root in the denominator, you know, 2 over the square root of 3 or something like that. But in this case, no, this is actually fine. Okay, so I just wanted to throw those two things out there. All right, so let's look at compositions. So again, today, this is not brand new. This is definitely Algebra 2 material. The new part of this is the domain that we have to focus on. And this one can get, it can make your brain hurt sometimes. So I'll try and spell it out as easily as I can. But, um, you know, trying to figure out the domain sometimes are a little tricky. So it says, another method to combine functions is called composition. So given f of x and g of x, the composition. So this looks like multiplication, but it's not. It's an open circle. But it's a little one. It's not an O. All right? So this reads f of g of x. So we can say f of g of x. Another way to write that is f of g of x, like this. OK? So you may have seen one or the other, or maybe both, hopefully. But um, you need to be able to identify both. Just know that they mean the same thing. The domain. All right, so here we go. The domain of the composite function, f of g of x, is the domain of g such that g of x is in the domain of f. All right? And when they're worded like that, that can be a little, you know, trying on the brain sometimes. But basically, here's what's happening. You have x. It's an input. You put it in, and you get g of x out, which is an output, like a y value then those outputs become these inputs, right? So that means that this has to live in the domain of f because you're about to put it into, the, into f, right? It's about to become an input. So let's talk about the function machine, right? Because so hopefully when you first started learning functions, oh, that's not the one I want you to start with, that there's, this, there's a function machine. So you talk about this like, but maybe even before algebra one, whenever you start talking about functions. But you have inputs, these are your x's, the function does something to it, and then it spits out your outputs, those are your y's, right? Function machine, input, output. So when we have compositions, you put something into g, something happens, this is g of x. Then g of x becomes the input for the next one to give you f of g of x. All right, so the y's become the x's, and that's why these outputs have to be in this domain. Otherwise, you don't get to use them because your input is what your domain is from. Make sense? Another way to look at the composition function machine is this. You put something in, g happens to it, so there's g of x, then g of x goes into f of x, this is where your f of g of x, and then there's your final output. So it kind of all happens at once. All right, so remember your inputs. You have inputs, and then those outputs become the new inputs. That's what I mean by input and output. Think of the function machine. All right. So with all that said, if I have this, if we write it like this, f of g of x, and you have to keep it straight because we're going to have f of g of x and g of x, right? These, like I would calculate g of x, right? I get some value, some y value. That y value becomes a new, the new x value. So the way this reads is if you have this, whether this is f, this is g, vice versa, whatever, the domain of f of g of x, or this function, is the domain of g, this input here, 
such that this is in the domain of f. So you just have to make sure that g of x is in the domain of f. And hopefully that makes sense because g of x is your new x value. You with me on that? So it's always this has, this has to be in the domain of f. And I'll show you how to work that out. So just like yesterday, don't get all tied up in what's happening over here because we can calculate this. But then figuring out the domains all comes from our originals over here. All right? So let's look at number one. The, oh, shoot. The, so we look at these domains separately. This is a what kind of function? Linear. So this is all real numbers. This is what? Quadratic. So it's also all real numbers. Right? So f of g of x. That means that this is going to be f of g of x. This is another way to write it, right? So I take g of x, which is x squared minus 4, and I substitute it into here. So x squared minus 4 plus 7. So then that gives me x squared plus 3, and that is f of g of x. And I don't care if you write it like this or you write it like this, but, you know, you have to know both of them anyway. I prefer this way. So then the domain of this is the domain of g such that g of x lives in this domain, All right? So is all real numbers going to live in all real numbers? Yes. yes. And so your domain here is all real numbers. When they're both all real numbers, just like on the other ones, it makes it easy. It's just all real numbers. That one isn't the tricky one. So then let's do g of f of x. So I take f of x and put it into g. So that's going to give me x plus 7 squared minus 4. Is that going to become x squared plus 49? No. no. So this is a perfect square trinomial, so this is x squared plus 14x plus 49 minus 4. So this gives me x squared plus 14x plus 45, and that is g of f of x. And once again, since they're both all real numbers, yeah, all real numbers, oops, domain is... Okay, everybody okay with that? All right. Whoops, dang it. Now let's look at this next one. This first one is what? Linear. So this is all real numbers. What is this one? Reciprocal. So it, it's technically not a reciprocal because there's an x in the numerator, but it is a rational function at least. So, but when we can figure out what the what the domain is, what's the domain? Set of all x's such that what? Good. X cannot equal negative one, so we at least know that much. All right. So we've got our domain. So let's go find our compositions, and then we'll come back and talk about the domains. So f of g of x, I take, that means I take g of x and I'm putting it into f of x. So this is going to be 3 minus x over x plus 1. So in order to combine these, what do I need to have? The same denominator. So that means this run right here is going to get multiplied by x plus 1 over x plus 1. So I get 3 times x plus 1 over x plus 1 minus x over x plus 1. All right, so that numerator on the left-hand side, so I don't have to rewrite everything, that becomes 3x plus 3, right? So we'll just make that 3x plus 3. So then when I actually do this, I get 3x minus x is going to give me 2x plus 3 over x plus 1. Can I do anything else to simplify that? No. So this is f of g of x. So let's think about this. It's the, the domain of this is the domain of g. This is g. So it'll be this domain so long as this lives inside of here. Does this live inside of all real numbers? Yes. So since this, this lives inside of there, right? Because it's everything lives inside of all real numbers. So if I have all real numbers except for negative 1, does that live inside of all real numbers? Yes. Like, does the number 5 live inside of all real numbers? Yes. This, you know, all whole numbers, that sort of thing. 
except for negative, right. Exactly, I'm not saying that the domain is all real numbers, but does, do, uh, does everything that's included here get included here? And the answer is yes, so then this is the domain. The domain is the set of all x's such that x cannot equal negative 1. It's not the intersection of both of them, no, not. Not the intersection of both of them. That is not, I did not say that at all today. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> Okay, all right, yeah, no. All right, so then g of f of x. So I take f and put it into g. So that means I'm gonna have three minus x over three mi minus x plus one. Sorry, a little brain fart there. So this is equal to three minus x over four minus x. That equals g of f of x. So, the domain of that composition is the domain of F such that this domain, or so, such that this lives inside of G. Does all real numbers live inside of here? No. So, what I need to say is F of X, right, since F of X is my input there, F of X cannot equal negative 1, right? It can't equal negative 1. So this is 3 minus x cannot equal negative 1. So x cannot equal what? 4, and it's positive 4. Which I realize you could look at this right here and know that it can't equal 4. But remember, just like yes, this is something that's similar to yesterday. This, if I, if I was able to actually cancel some stuff out over here, you may not see that inside of here. That's why you have to go over there. So it's all real numbers, but it cannot equal negative four, or it can't equal four. So it's a set of all x's such that x cannot equal four. That's your domain. Okay. What questions do you have? You're going to have to actually analyze this. This isn't just like do this step, do this step. You're going to have to think, does this stuff, will this be an input for the next one? Like you have to actually analyze what's going on here. You don't get to just run through steps and it gives you answers, okay? We good? You have to actually think. I know, that's a lot to ask. All right, flip it over. Let's look at four. All right, so what is this function here? Square root. So, this is the set of all x's such that what? Greater than or equal to negative 5. Yeah, x plus 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0, so that's where you get x is greater than or equal to negative 5. And then what's the domain here? All real numbers. All real numbers. Okay. So let's find f of g of x. So I'm going to take g of x put it into f of x. This is going to give me the square root of x squared plus 5. Is there anything I can do with that? No. So this is equal to f of g of x. That's all I can do, right? So the domain of this is the domain of g such that g of x lives inside of f of x. Does that happen? Yes or no? No. Okay. So let's look at what happens here. That means that what we're saying is that no matter what, your g of x is going to have to be greater than or equal to negative 5. Do you agree with that? So g of x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. So that means that x squared has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. Is that always true? Yes. Is there any way to make x, is there any way to make gx, g of x not greater than or equal to negative 5? No, because no matter what you do, your output for g of x is going to be a positive number. Make sense? Or zero. So your outputs there are all going to live in this domain just fine. So that means here that my domain actually is all real numbers. That's where I'm telling you, you have to think about it a little bit. You have to analyze, okay? 
Analyze. Your g of x becomes the input here, right? So the input for f has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. This is your new input. It has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. It's going to be no matter what I do. There's not a single x you can substitute in there where you will not get x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Therefore, your domain is all real numbers. Okay? You have to actually think about your inputs and your outputs here. All right? Ask me a question. Yes. Because this is, this is this domain. The domain of f is that x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So I know that from just from this part right here, right? And since I have to, I calculate g of x, and then I'm going to substitute it into f, right? You see how this is my input for f? So you're, you're telling me right here that your input has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. So g of x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. No matter what you do, that's a true statement. You can't make that not work. It will always work. Okay, therefore your domain is all real numbers. You can't come up with anything that doesn't. Think of maybe if that marinates a little, it needs to marinate on your brain a little bit more. Yeah, let it, it might click in just a minute. All right, let's move on to g of f of x. So I take f of x, I put it into g of x. So that means I take the square root of x plus 5, and I put it into g of x, and I square it. So what's the square root of x plus 5 squared? x plus 5. So that is equal to g of f of x. All right. Now, the domain of this is the domain of f. The domain of f is what I have in pink over there. x has to be greater than or equal to negative 5. It's the domain of f such that f lives in g of x. So does this live in g of x? You're all real numbers. Yes, it does. Therefore, your domain is the set of all x's such that x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Remember, it is the domain of the input. The input. So although when you look at this, it looks like your domain should be all real numbers, but it's not, OK? Because of the originals, yes? It's always the domain of the input, and then such that it actually lives in the other one, and sometimes you have to go check that, yes. Then that's when we do this, and what we did on the one before it. Okay, you have to go check things then, figure out what it will be. All right, we good? Oh my goodness. All right, let's look at example five. What is the domain of the first one? All real numbers. What's the domain of the second one? All real numbers. Well, that's beautiful. When they're both all real numbers, it's all real numbers. Okay. So this is equal to f of g of x. So I take g of x, put it into f of x. So I get the cube root of x plus 4 cubed minus 1. So what's the cube root of x plus 4 cubed? x plus 4. And so I get x plus 4 minus 1. That's x plus 3. And that is f of g, oh, I cannot write, <coughs> of x. There we go. All right, so then your domain. It's the domain of g such that g of x lives in f of x. Well, that's all real numbers. There we go. So then g of f of x. I take f of x, which is x cubed minus 1, and I put it in here. So x cubed minus 1 plus 4. So that's equal to the cube root of x cubed plus 3. Can I do anything with that? No. Okay, so do, can, is there anything we can do with this? No. no. So this is g of f of x, right? And then my domain is going to be what? All real, All real numbers. Very good. Okay, so then let's look at these evaluating ones. We're going to jump to example seven. So we've got f of g of nine, okay, and this should all be a review to you. So g of nine, we're going to find that first, right? So what, I, what this means is f of g of nine. So we're going to find g of nine. g of nine is the square root of nine minus four, which is the square root of five. So then I find f of 
the square root of 5. That's equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 5 times the square root of 5. So square root of 5 squared is what? 5 plus 5 squared of 5. Is, does this become 10 squared of 5? No. This is equal to f of g of 9. Okay. All right. No domain. We don't have to do it. It doesn't ask you for that. So let's find g of f of 7. So g of f of 7. f of 7 is 7 squared plus 5 times 7. That's equal to 49 plus 35. What's that? 84. So then I find g of 84. That's equal to the square root of 84 minus 4 the square root of 80, so you figure out what the square root of 80 is. What is that? You got it. 4 square root of 5. <laughs> they don't like it when you beat them. It's a little competitive. They think they know how. All right. Everybody good with all that? Okay, because you got to be able to... Um, you don't have to be able to simplify them in your head, but you have to be able to do it quickly and accurately for sure. No domain. It didn't say that. All right, so now we're going to look at decomposing a function. Okay, If I have this and I want to take it apart, all right? so this is h of x, I'm gonna, and it says that f of g of x. So I would have an f of x and a g of x. Now, which one of these is on the inside? G of, if it's f of g of x, g of x is on the inside. So when you take it apart, right, you can look at, so f of g of x equals h of x. So if I use this right here and let that be g of x, what would f of x be? x cubed. So if I have this, if I have this and I want to find, because it says over there, f of g of x, then I would take this and substitute it in there. What, isn't that what I would get? Yes? Are there other options? Mm -hmm. We'll do a different one for the same one. What if I said g of x was equal to 2x? What would f of x have to be? Because f of g, because this is h of x, dear. And f of g of x equals h of x. So I'm taking, a, taking it apart instead of putting it together. h of x equals f of g of x, right? So if I take this, here's my g of x, I'm going to put it into f of x. So h of x would be equal to 1 minus 2x cubed, once I substitute it back in. No. You're not, no, 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 no. We're not, no, no. We're taking it apart. We're not reversing things. Taking it apart. Okay. If this is 2 of x, or I'm sorry, if this is 2 times x, what would f of x be? 1 minus x cubed. Yes, good. So then here, if I need f of x and g of x, I'm give you one option here. What if this is x squared plus 1? Then what would f of x be? <laughs> it's okay. Cube root of x. I won't let them talk on the next one. Okay. I can stop now. Uh, no, I'm going to do, we're going to do the second one of this, and then I'm going to let you do some on your own. Okay, so don't say it out loud. It, what if I just said g of x was x squared? Everybody let, sh, sh, just write it down. All right, so Jenny, what would it be? Mm -hmm. You got it. That's it. Okay. Yes! That's why we're taking that apart. We're not going backwards. We're just taking it apart. Then when we put it together, we should get that. But there's more than one right answer most all of the time. No, no, no. no. All right, so y'all work on 10 and 11 while I hand out the assignment. I'm so sorry, Michael. Must be so hard to be you. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, Parker. Parker, you, sh you shouldn't have volunteered, dude. I'm just saying. <laughs> you can go back and watch it. Okay, so I'm going to give you one of each of these, and then I'm going to ask, ask you for another one. Because there's more than one right answer. There's not just one right answer. You only have to put one. Oh, my goodness gracious. Okay. So here are, I gave you one option of each. So tell me then, anybody want to give me a different option for 10? And raise your hand or Michael's going to be upset. Anybody have anything different for that? So, I'm sorry, what? Not just 4 over x, but I could use, oh, well, I, hang on. They may come on and tell us we have to stay because they did say, but if I did 4 over x plus 7, then this could be x minus 1, okay? And even here, let me do this real quick. I could do um, negative 1 half absolute value of x plus 5, and then this could be x plus 3. Those are just options, okay? You don't have to write down every single option there is. Just write down one that works, and I'm good with that. Because if I put 4 over x, where are you going to substitute that in? What are you going to make this one look like where 4 over x would work? You can't put 1 over 7, because when you add them, that's not going to work. So make sure once you do it that when you substitute it back in, you're going to get that, okay? All right, y'all go ahead and go. Um, grab your phones. Have a great day.